Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. We often have to represent numbers as a string of binary digits and well, we do have sort of a fixed standard way of doing so. However, as it turns out, that is not the only way we can do this. You see, the mapping between binary digits and numbers is actually arbitrary and what that means is we can create any code we like as long as it makes sense. What we're going to be looking at today is exactly that. We're going to be looking at the grey code, which is an alternative representation of numbers. Instead of describing it to you, I'm just going to show you examples of grey code in action. As you can see, it looks very similar to the code that, you know, we are quite familiar with. However, the subtle difference is that, well, the ordering of certain set of codes are different. In fact, if you look closely enough, you'll see the special property of grey code. And that is for each adjacent pair of codes, there is only one digit that is different. So of course, naturally, the next question is how do we generate a grey code? Well, the method is very interesting and is known as reflex and prefix. To do this, we start with a 1-bit grey code, which is just 0 and 1. And to generate the 2-bit version from that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to draw a line at the bottom and basically reflect the existing digits around that line. Then when that's done, all we have to do is to actually prefix the code with zeros and ones. Everything above the reflection line will get a prefix of zero and everything below will get a prefix of one. Let's try that again with the three bit version. Once again, we draw a line at the bottom and we reflect it. And what we get now are eight sets of values. All we have to do now is to actually prefix the values with zeros and ones. That gives us our three bit gray code. So yeah, you can use this method to generate gray codes of any size with relative ease. So then the last question we'll probably need to answer is, well, what do we use gray codes for? One reason why we might want to use gray code is because, well, we know for sure that only one digit is going to change each time. So this makes things more predictable and may actually reduce the potential for errors in things like embedded circuitry. Of course, that is one use. There is another use as well, and that is in generating Carnot maps. What are those? Well, we'll talk about that in a coming Random Wednesday episode. For now, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of all the other episodes of Friday Minis. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.